OK, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is afternoon now. Um, I, I realized that, that I, have, I have half an hour. And this is just terrible, because, because I always massively overrun. And I was actually thinking I had it even longer than I do. So uh, I'm going to try and get through this stuff fairly quickly. But uh, don't feel embarrassed if I, if I crash my time limit and you feel the need to go and get your lunch. Just, just, just get up and leave. And that, that will make me realize that I've overrun again. So that's, that's fine. Um, OK, so the talk is not quite what is on the, on the, on the uh, agenda. It says type level rebooted. It's not type level rebooted. It's specifically type level Scala rebooted. That's what I'm going to talk about. Um, so I guess there's two, two, no, two, two things in there. There's sort of type, well, three things, actually. There's type level, the Scala, and reboot. So first question is, what's type level? I guess probably most people here know what type level is. Is there anybody here who has never heard of type level? If you just put your hand up. Really? OK. Wow. I'm surprised, actually. Um, OK, well, type level is a sort of an umbra It's an open source organization of open source projects. Uh, it includes uh, things like, um, I mean, the three, if you like, founding um, projects, or the central projects were uh, Shapeless, initially Scala Z, later Cats, uh, and Spire. Um, there are a number of other projects who are part of the umbrella. Um, and we're basically organized around, uh, around a mixture of sort of two, two sets of goals, some technical and some non-technical. So the, uh, the, the, um, from a sort of more technical point of view, we have, a, we have an opinion about what programming in Scala should be. Um, and uh, it's basically uh, uh, the, uh, the, the model is of, you know, we want to, we want to write, we want, we're functional programmers, so, so we, we want to write uh, pure programs, we want to control our side effects, uh, so purity is important. Um, types are very important to us, I mean you can, you can be a functional programmer without necessarily uh, being uh, particularly uh, exercised about types. We, 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 we have a Scala type system to play with, it's, it's a very, very interesting and expressive type system, we want to make as much use of that as possible. And, and in Scala is crucial because um, uh, we want, to, we want, to, we want, we want our, our, our projects to be idiomatic for Scala. Uh, of course, there are you know, different opinions on what the right kind of idioms for Scala should be, but it's got to kind of generally cut with the grain of, of what the language is, um, sort of slavishly copying Haskell or, uh, or Agda or Idris or, or whatever, something like that, is not, is not really what we have in mind. We want to, we want to kind of take ideas from, from wherever we can find them that are useful, that are applicable to this kind of stuff, but make them work in Scala specifically. Um, as I said, it's an organization of um, um, open source projects, um, Everything, everything that is part of, ty of, of underscore has, um, what am I talking about, type level? <laughs> everything that is part of type level is, um, uh, is an open source project. Um, and uh, we're also keen to share ideas and code, both in the sense of wanting to make our, actively make our ideas accessible, find people, bring them into, uh, the, bring them into the family of people who are interested in, 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 in functional programming in Scala. Um, and, uh, and we want you know, people to enjoy themselves and, and feel comfortable in this, kind of, in, 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 this, in this kind of community of people who are working, working, working with functional programming. So I guess, I mean, Eric, Eric Osheim did a great talk on, on, on sort of the general model of how to build uh, open source communities. He, he did a wonderful talk at um, uh, Scala World uh, last year, which I highly recommend just search for it on, on, on YouTube, it's, it's a great talk. The, 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 sort of the headline bullet point is that the idea behind type level is to remove the barriers to functional programming in Scala. So all of them, both technical and non-technical. Okay, so that's what type level is. Um, so, what, so what is type level Scala? Well, uh, the background is that um, uh, it was, it's a fork of Scala that was initiated at the end of 2014. Um, and the aim was to uh, address issues in the, uh, the Scala compiler as an actual concrete implementation, but also just in the language in general that are particularly problematic for people programming in the pure type 4 functional programming style that is uh, so important to, uh, to the type level family of projects. So, so the aim was to, to look at some of the, um, uh, the, 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 sort of the outstanding kind of bugs in the Scala issue tracker that are particularly uh, annoying and difficult to deal with for, for, for people working in those projects. Um, so it started in 2014. Uh, there was a, a flurry of activity around it. And then 
Um, it completely stalled. Um, for people who are aware of the background, may be aware of the fact that um, Scala Z was initially part of type level. Um, there was uh, a drama. Scala Z was no longer part of type level. And, and CATS arrived at that point um, as, a, as an alternative to, to Scala Z, which would fit within, with, within the, the, the sort of the general goals and objectives of type level. So basically, everybody who was um, involved with uh, working on the type level um, fork of Scala, um, was, was completely um, absorbed in working on, on CATS instead. So all work essentially on, on type level Scala stopped. Um, and although the work stopped, um, none of the problems that, that, that type level Scala had been originally forked um, to address went away. Um, and uh, to some extent, what happened is that, is that people started exploring, if you like, smaller, less ambitious, more local alternatives to having a full brown fork of the Scala compiler, and, and picked up some of the slack um, with plugins and macros um, and various other kinds of things. I mean, I think uh, some, some really, really prime examples of, of, of exactly those kinds of things would be, uh, for example, Eric Osheim's Kind Projector. Uh, Kind Projector is, is essentially a, 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 it's a Scala compiler plugin that sort of uh, uses and abuses existing Scala syntax to provide um, uh, some kind of support for partial, partial type application, which is, which is kind of a thing which is, which is very important in libraries like CATS, which make, make extensive use of higher kinded types. Um, there are other things like sort of my library export hook, which is, sort of relates to, to how... Um, uh, implicits are found uh, and, and the priorities that they have relative to other implicits and things like this. So, so there are a number of little sort of piecemeal ad hoc things. We, we actually found that we, we, we kind of got quite a lot further than we were expecting it was going to be possible to get with just sort of plugins and macros. Um, and, and to some extent that sort of took a little bit of the pressure off um, uh, the, 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 the desire to con continue um, you know, putting large amounts of effort into type level scale. Nevertheless, Kind of still lots and lots of issues. These, these are all kind of like sort of slightly leaky uh, kind of abstractions. Certainly, as far as my, uh, as far as export hook is concerned, for example, I think you know, although in some respects it's the right answer to the to the question, the actual implementation has some fundamental constraints on it, which make it very difficult to use in practice. Um, so there are still fundamental issues. Um, so who 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 has heard of SI two seven one two? Okay, lots of people. Who, who has been hurt by it <laughs> in one way or another? Uh, quite a few, not quite as many as have heard of it. Um, so um, one of the things I, I did, I, I've done fairly recently, was to sort of extend, so I, I've been sort of refocusing over the last couple of years, Shapeless, on uh, specifically on uh, using it as a, as a, a toolkit for um, automatically deriving type class instances for algebraic data types. Um, the kinds of sort of canonical examples that had existed until, say, say maybe a year and a half ago, were all type class derivations for type classes which are indexed by, by um, first order types. So, this so examples of this would be things like sort of codecs, um, things like uh, you find in S codec or Circe or whatever, where you're, you have an encoder, a decoder for some kind of type. Now, typically, critically, these are all fully applied types. They're not types which have holes in them. They're, 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 it's, 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 it would be a codec for a list of int as opposed to a codec for list. Um, now, um, I started, uh, again, with, with, with the introduction of CATS. CATS has a very large number of interesting type classes which are indexed by, uh, by higher kind of types. So, for example, functor um, has, is indexed by, not by list of int, but by just list. Um, so I started work on a, a library called Kittens, and Kittens is, is uh, a kind of an accumulation of um, infrastructure for, for deriving type class instances for these, uh, for, for, well, basically all CATS type classes, but specifically it has to be able to deal with, say, deriving type class instances for things like functor, which means I have to be able to deal with higher kinded types. Now, it turns out that SI2712, which I will examine in a moment, um, uh, is, is a problem that you immediately run into whenever you try to do anything even vaguely interesting with higher kinded types. So I ran slap bang into this and uh, decided, and I came up with um, another kind of workaround for SI2712, which, which I exploited in Kittens. Um, and I was going to do a talk of flat map uh, uh, about this new kind of uh, workaround for SI2712, um, and, but then thought, well, okay, 
maybe you know things moved on a bit. Maybe it's worth having a look to see if it's possible to to try and to try and uh, actually address the compiler bug. Um, so I kind of I kind of I kind of pre-committed myself by by sort of sticking my neck out and saying, right, this year I'm going to fix SI two seven one two, and. And I sort of sat down to try and do, 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 do something for FlatMap, and, and, and it turned out that, that it was a hell of a lot easier than I was expecting it to be. Uh, in, in effect, I actually got to a very, very first cut proof of concept over a weekend. Um, and bearing in mind that, well, what is SI2712? Um, let's have a look if we can find it. Um, this is a bug that has been open for a very, very long time, 2009. Um, it's a big deal of a bug, uh, in as much as um, if you if you look at these numbers, they don't look huge, but but basically the average number of of, of votes for issues on the Scarlet Issue Tracker is, is kind of less than one. So so the fact that there are 83 votes for an issue means wow, this is this is something that a lot of people care about, and and it's sort of deceptively simple looking. However, it's kind of the reference to what needs to be done to fix this bug um, is 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 a reference to 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 a. Um, um, to, to a paper which is, which is full of fairly scary stuff. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's absolutely not a trivial thing to do. Um, and, and so this, this, this issue has been kind of sitting in the Scarlet Issue track for ages and looks like a really big deal. The fact that it turned out that um, putting some effort into it over, over a weekend could get close enough to, 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 to you know, a proof of concept fix for this was kind of an eye-opener for me because I think, I think to some extent... Um, I think to some extent a lot of us have kind of got ourselves into a mindset where we kind of think the Scala compiler is this, is this, this mythical beast that, that is completely incomprehensible and impenetrable and, and, and maybe the code is absolutely awful as well um, and, and sort of shied away from actually, actually thinking of it as just any other open source project that we might contribute fixes to, that we might work on. And, and I, I, I kind of think we, we've got this wrong. Um, and I think this is a sort of, a, if you like, a, 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 a proof of the fact that we've got it wrong, that, that, that it should succumb to, to, to kind of like a, um, a weekend's effort. Um, and just to kind of uh, dispel any, any or to attempt to dispel any kind of, any, any kind of myths and misunderstandings, um, I do not have any, 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 any superpowers. Uh, and even if I did have superpowers, I wouldn't have needed them to fix this bug. Um, it's, it's something that, that I think pretty much... You know, with enough time and effort, pretty much everyone, I reckon, in this room would have been able to do the code base, having spent quite a lot of time over the last six months working on it for this, uh, for this bug and for others, um, is, is much better than you might have been led to believe. Um, it looks like any other large, mature code base that you will likely have seen in Scala, um, and actually is in a lot better shape than most that, that, that you've seen. If, if, you, if you think the Scala compiler... Um, code base is terrible, you kind of need to get out more <laughs> because there, there, are, there are things that are much, much, much worse out there, uh, that's for sure. And it's something which now um, the, the Scala compiler team at Lightbender has done a huge favor to everybody over the last year or so, putting to, replacing the existing very, very cumbersome, very time-consuming uh, non-incremental ant build and replacing it by, a, um, by an SBT-based build, which is frankly a joy to work with. It really is the case now that to, if you want to work on the Scala compiler, you can fork the repository, clone it onto your machine, spin out SBT, start hacking. And, and it really is that easy. Um, and I would absolutely, the main thing I want to get out of um, talking about the reboot of, um, um, of type level Scala is, is to convey the idea that actually we can all do this as, as a Scala community. We have each of us have particular kind of issues within um, the Scala compiler, the Scala language, that we care about more than anybody else, and certainly more than um, uh, the, the, the Scala compiler team at Lightbend can afford to care about. I mean, they have, they, they have their own particular uh, uh, interests and motivations, their own incentives, and, and sometimes things will just not be high enough priority for them to be able to devote the time required to work on them. Um, things like SI2712 is an example. It's been around since 2009 or thereabouts. Um, it's a big deal. It's affected lots of us. Uh, it's caused huge amounts of pain, and not, not just directly, but also in terms of the workarounds that people have uh, had to apply to um, 
to, to, rather than fixing the bug, uh, working around, I mean, the, the, the amount of time and effort and energy wasted, and money, obviously, because that's what it corresponds to, um, uh, compared to the amount of time and energy and effort required to actually fix the bug, is really quite sad. Um, and I think there are many other cases, things like this, where rather than you know, coming out, accepting that the Scala compiler is what it is, wait for Dottie, we actually need to just go out and fix the stuff, and we can. And I think I really want people to believe that. Um, okay, so we have a fix. It's been merged. Um, let's skip that. So the next thing is, um, well, we have, we have a, a kind of, if you like, a shopping list of things that, that I think would be good for, 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 for type-level Scala, certainly which, which will help type-level projects kind of move ahead uh, more comfortably. Um, um, so things like... Um, uh, the literal types, 42.type, people may or may not have heard this, the ability to use um, uh, literal values in, in, in type positions to, to refer to the corresponding singleton types. This is something that, that Shapeless um, uh, has to encode via macros, uh, and, and it makes very, very good use of it, I believe, in, in the way that, for example, it encodes uh, records, extensible records uh, in, in Scala. Um, it would be nice to have first-class language support for it. The, the, the macros in Shapers are you know, clunky and ugly, and it would be nice to be able to have sort of nicer syntax for this kind of stuff. Um, there are various other kinds of things which um, uh, sort of relating to the ability to have multiple implicit parameter blocks, partial type application. These, these are all things which, which, for which there are kind of workarounds in the language, but they all introduce additional layers of complexity and uh, and ideas which are maybe a little bit advanced, so for example, multiple implicit parameter blocks, that makes it more straightforward to encode ideas drawn from sort of the dependently typed programming world. So for example, languages like, uh, like Agder and Idris, which again are used, I believe, kind of very, uh, uh, um, uh, I'll, I'll make good use of in, in, in Shapeless. Um, but there are, there are, there are, but there are, there are problems um, uh, with uh, trying to express these ideas which require um, uh, people who have run across the orcs pattern, for example, will know that it, it kind of, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's simple in a way, but it's a complicating factor and it masks what the underlying, uh, the underlying uh, construct is. So if we actually had multiple parameter blocks, this would be very useful. It's actually a comparatively simple addition to Scala, um, something which is being considered for Dottie. Um, partial type application, again, these are the things which come up in, in, in libraries like CATS. Um, one of the big issues for people working with, um, working with uh, Shapeless, which uses lots and lots of uh, implicit resolution, which uh, is, uh, if you like, um, doing computations at compile time via implicit resolution to um, compute uh, type class instances for uh, arbitrarily sized um, uh, HList types. Um, and people who uh, use, I mean, very few people kind of think of it directly in those terms, but what they think, what they will think about is um, using Shapeless, for example, as uh, 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 as part of a um, uh, say a, a Kodak library, say something like Circe, where they're trying to um, automatically derive encoders and decoders for say a large uh, a large Scala ADT, which has maybe got many many branches, and the individual case class parts uh, branches have got many many uh, elements. These can produce compile times which are just insane. Um, so it seems, well, I, it is definitely possible to, to, to make some um, uh, huge improvements in, 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 in compile times uh, for this particular pattern of, of, of implicit resolution. Um, uh, so this is kind of work in progress. Um, some of this stuff uh, is, is, uh, is, is done. Some of it's in progress. Um, all of this is stuff which is targeted towards the type level fork of Scala. Um, but kind of what, what does that mean for all of us who are using Scala in our day jobs? Can, can you actually use it? It's great to have stuff in type level Scala, but you know, what is type level Scala? It comes from this random bunch of people on the internet, crazy functional programmers. Uh, do you trust them to uh, provide you with a compiler rather than, say, Lightbend? Um, well, um, I think, what was I going to say here? I was going to say yes. <laughs> right, yes, you can use it. Um, can you use it now? Um, okay, because um, that's kind of what we want. I mean, I, I, I def certainly 
fixes for SI2712. There's, a, there's another bug, which I'll, I'll mention in a moment, SI7046, and also things like the in, inductive implicit um, speedups, which, to be blunt, uh, if you're trying to use shapeless for doing um, uh, significant chunks of type class derivation, either directly or indirectly via, via some kind of, uh, you know, via Cersei or something like that. You, you, you want to use it because you want your compile times to go down and you want some of the bugs that, uh, that are affect this kind of stuff to go away. Um, so it, there, there is very definitely a motivation for doing that. Um, but there are some constraints as well. So um, the releases have to be, you know, releases of type L Scala have to be compatible with the existing ecosystem. You can't just rip up everything. You need to be able to use your existing uh, binary dependencies without modification. Um, uh, there's got to be big benefits. I mean, it's, I mean, you know, Bill, Bill mentioned this in his talk in the morning. If you want to evolve stuff, there's got to be a win from it. Um, and there should be minimal costs as well. So there's got to be a win, minimal costs. Um, and you shouldn't be introducing any massive new risks uh, in what you're doing. And if all those constraints are met, well, then, yeah, I think, I think it, is, it is pretty reasonable. So those are the constraints. This is the policy for inclusion of stuff into type-level Scala. So any type-level Scala release that we make will be tracking light bend Scala releases. So, so we have currently um, a type-level Scala release which matches exactly Scala 211.8 from Lightbend. Uh, we also have uh, a type level Scala release for uh, 2.12.0 release candidate 2, which is the latest release candidate from the 2.12 series, um, with some additions. So these are, um, so these are going to, so these do rather, um, they generate code which is binary compatible with, with Lightbend Scala, which means that um, that uh, type-level Scala binaries can be uh, linked against light bend Scala binaries in, in, in both directions. So you can, you can choose some portion of your code, compile it with type-level Scala, uh, and, uh, and expect to be able to use existing up, upstream uh, light bend Scala binaries, uh, and vice versa. Uh, if a particular project would benefit, a particular library would benefit from using uh, like, uh, type level Scala uh, internally, uh, that will, they can produce binary artifacts which can be consumed downstream by people who are building stuff with, uh, with, with, type, uh, with light bend Scala. Um, okay. Um, so, so, more of the policy on what's included. So, to try, what we, we don't want. Um, type level Scala to be a divergent fork of light bend Scala. We want stuff to be merged back in um, at the earliest possible opportunity. Um, so the policy we've, we've adopted to try and encourage that is to say that anything which is included in type level Scala must first be submitted as a pull request against light bend Scala. So it's got to actually be a pull request going through the uh, light bend CI, being reviewed by, say, Jason and Adrian, um, uh, that's an absolute non-negotiable first condition for something being included in type level Scala. Um, it's got to be a reasonable, some, something that has a reasonable likelihood of being merged. Uh, there's no point, you know, sending a pull request which deletes all and replaces by the implementation of Idris, for instance. I mean, that, that's not, that's not uh, it, would, it would be a pull request, but there would be absolutely no reasonable prospect of it being merged. Um, it's got to offer, offer something significant. There's got to be something which um, provides a significant benefit. Um, so trivial things. One of the first things I contributed to um, type level Scala before the, before the reboot in its initial incarnation was the ability to add primes, there's a little you know, primes at the end of identifiers, which is kind of, it's kind of cute. I mean, there are lots of situations where you're sort of working through kind of example code where you, you might refine a definition through, you know, foo equals blah, foo prime equals blah, blah, foo prime prime, etc., and so on. And you kind of see that a lot of this stuff in, in, in kind of academic papers and this kind of thing. And it's, it's kind of nice to be able to write that. But honestly, it's completely trivial. There is no point maintaining a difference between two, two branches of a compiler simply for something that small. So it's got to be a significant thing. And it's got to be, whatever these changes are, it must be binary compatible with Lightbent Scala. Um, unless, of course, an actual binary fix is the motivation for the change. Um, so far, the binary compatibility 
aspect has, has kind of come almost by default because most of the changes are fundamentally syntactic ones um, or, or relate to type inference as opposed to anything relating to the actual encoding of uh, encoding of behavior in the bytecode or whatever. Um, okay, so what's the result? So we've had type level Scala for 2.11.8. Uh, it includes a uh, fix for SI2712, a fix for SI7046, which is um, I, I'll do a quick demo of that. It includes um, an implementation of the literal types. Um, SIP, this is SIP23, otherwise known as uh, 42.type, and some minor fixes to um, GADTs, which, which are of interest, um, but I'm not going to talk about them more now. Um, uh, I, last time I gave this talk, which is really not very long ago, um, it was uh, a coming soon on the release for Lightbend Scala um, 2.12.0 RC2. Um, we now actually have a release for that. And that includes um, the fix for SI7046 and the literal types um, SIP. Um, and it doesn't include the other two things because the other two things have been merged. Um, and I'll just show you the next slide before I carry on with that. So this is, this is the situation. So the SI2712 and GATT fixes are merged in 2.12.0. Uh, the literal types and SI7046 stuff is under consideration for 2.12.1. And what I would previously have said is that there are backports of these as existing as pull requests against 2.11. Um, these have actually, most of them, been merged. So um, all of this stuff, uh, particularly the SI7046 one, this is a really quite a big deal because this is a big deal for people using um, uh, type class derivation on ADTs. Um, and um, uh, so these, will, these, are, these, are, these are already merged for 2.11.9, which is fantastic. Uh, somebody came up to me um, uh, a few weeks ago and said, Miles, you must be really upset that, you know, Lightbender kind of like stealing all your thunder by merging all your pull requests. Um, <laughs> to, to, which, to which my response is, no, you really don't get the point. The point is to kind of move stuff along in the kind of direction that makes sense for type level and work as closely as possible with Lightbend to get this stuff merged in so everybody can use it. So as far as I'm concerned, this is absolutely the best possible result that we can have. Um, and I think what I've been trying to say is that people should think of, um, uh, think of type level Scala as being, if you like, a, a staging, uh, ver you know, a, a, a not quite experimental, but a, if you like, a, um, an early access release of features which we uh, strongly believe we will be able to get into, into a very, very close upcoming um, uh, release of, of, of Lightband Scala. So, I mean, and, and hopefully this is, this is, this is sufficient to, to, to kind of mitigate people's concerns about the, the risks associated with it. Um, okay. Is it still risky to use it? I kind of say it's risky not to use it. And the reason it's risky, no, and I'm serious about this, because if you don't, and you're actually faced with the problems that these, these bugs um, uh, relate to, then you either have a bug or you've got some complicated workaround for it. So in the case of SI2712, um, if, if you don't use a compiler with a fix or you're going to end up either using the plugin that I, I kind of Frankensteined into 2.11.8, which, you know, if you're using the, if you're using the SI2712 fix plugin, uh, it, that, I would say, is more risky than using type-level Scala. You should just use type-level Scala rather than, rather than a sort of a band-aid. Similarly, there's a whole bunch of workarounds um, for SI2712, all the unapplied stuff that you see in Scala, Zerd, and Cats, um, or the sort of traverse U, the U suffix methods that you see in Cats. Um, these are all fiddly, complicated workarounds. Um, they, they, they increase the sort of conceptual overload that you have when you look at that kind of code. Uh, it's harder to understand. Uh, if we have, if we have you know, the fixes and sort of the, the, the extensions that, 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 that type level Scala provide, and, and light bend later, then, then this, this makes everybody's life better. The risk is that you kind of accumulate um, fragile uh, Heath Robinson contraption workarounds for, for problems, um, and you, you, you pile on um, conceptual overhead. Um, and and this, this, this is a risk in its own right. It imposes a cost, a cognitive cost. So, so you can balance these things off. I, I kind of think that, that actually the risk, the, the balance is on the side of type level Scala rather than, rather than not. Um, so how do you use it? That's it. If you want to use type level Scala, add that to your build.sbt. Actually, it should probably say, say Scala organization in this build, but actually that will typically work. Um, and please, you know, try it now. Just drop that line in more or less in the place where you put Scala version equals org type level. Uh, if you're using 2.11.8, well, the constraints are 
211.8 or 212.12 RC2, and you need to use SBT 013.13 RC2 or later. And I spent quite a lot of time making it, getting to the point where it's that straightforward to switch between the two. It really is, uh, it really is that simple. Uh, everything will just work. All your upstream dependencies will just work. Um, um, please try. Um, okay, so full, yeah, full, de full details are at GitHub type level Scala. So I see it's lunchtime. <laughs> um, I was going to give some demos. Um, I guess we should go to lunch. How long do I have then? Okay. <laughs> Well, could somebody come on with a hook and kind of drag me off stage when, when the time has come? So SI2712, I'm going to show you. Um, let's see, what's the best thing to show? Uh, right. So let's have a look. Um, so here is SI2712. Um, this looks really, really simple. Let's make that a bit bigger. Kind of. You Sorry? don't understand. Uh, what? What's the problem? I thought you wanted to do some, something on the microphone. It's okay. You can continue. It's really about how much time I've got. Uh, lunch is one, one o'clock. After you, so we can go like, for half an hour. I can go for half an hour. Yeah, did you do really? Yeah. Okay. I, I thought lunch was. At, I thought lunch was at one. Uh, lunch is at uh, uh, one. And I had. I had. I had twelve. No. Because there is no one. one. There is no one here after you, so we can go up until. Uh, at least 15 minutes. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll, I'll get. <laughs> right, okay. Um, so anyway, this is a, this is a, this is this is this is the the, the code snippet in um, in in the ticket. Um, I'm not going to show you that. Uh, what I'm going to show you is a, is a more concrete example of some code that you might actually want to write, um, which which exhibits well, in fact, barely exhibits the problem. It's very very confusing. So. Um, here is, here is the functor trait. So this is the functor, you know, a subset of the functor from cats or Scala Z. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and define a, the, the functor, the right biased functor for either. Um, so we're going to want to have an instance. So we're going to be doing, doing a map over the right-hand side of either. Um, and uh, to do this, we need to provide an implementation of functor for either. Um, it uses this horrible kind of type lambda, nota, uh, type lambda uh, notation to, to, to basically um, fix, um, uh, fix the left-hand side but leave, leave the right-hand side free for, for, for mapping over. But I mean, it's, it's aside from the, 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 the um, kind of the, 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 the horrible encoding of, of partial type application, it's, it's, it's fairly straightforward. I mean, the, the, the map, the right bias map over either just takes the right-hand side of the either and maps over it. This is against 211.8 rather than 2.12. Um, OK, that's fine. So that should be fairly straightforward. Um, then we add a little bit of syntax, which means that we have a map. And again, this is for 2.11.8, so we don't actually have map directly on either. This, this will change in 2.12. Uh, but we'll still, want, we'll still want the functor instance for, for cats. Um, so then we have, um, we have a couple of values. And we should be able to do, do these maps. So let's, let's, let's actually see what happens. I'll just comment this out. Uh, so let's take these two out. So we've got two either's. And we're mapping over, over the string, the right-hand side. So we're mapping over the string. So we should expect to get, in the case of well, the thing where we have the foo on the right, we should get the length. Uh, as uh, three, and in the case where we've got the left value, it should be unchanged. So what happens? What happens when we try and compile this with vanilla? Uh, whoops, I've got no one doing now. Um, Right, so let's just compile that. OK, what do we get? Um, we get a completely obscure, incomprehensible, well, we get, we get, a, we get a method, um, an error message, which is apparently utterly unrelated to the root cause of the problem. Um, what it says is, 
Uh, there's no map defined on either. Well, that, that's of course true. Uh, that is absolutely true. Um, uh, because we're providing an extension method. So why isn't it finding the extension method for map? And the answer is because uh, when it attempts to uh, look up uh, an extension method, it needs to be able to um, apply this implicit class. The implicit class is indexed by a, um, a high kind of type f, which has a single type parameter. Okay, that's fine. We're, we're only interested in the single type, type parameter because we're trying to map over just one side of the IVA. However, um, and this is the essence of SI2712, uh, the Scala compiler will never, uh, at least up until the, the, the fix, will never unify, it will never match either um, against f. It will just simply refuse to do it. It won't have any mechanism for saying, okay, uh, I have two type parameters, I need to if you like, ignore one of them while, while, while trying to match up against the F in that. And so the, the net result is that uh, the implicit syntax never applies. Um, so there is no, so, so, you know, the fallback is, well, I'm attempting to evoke a, a, a non-existent method um, on an either. And, and so we get this obscure error message, and you just assume, oh, this, this cat's library is rubbish. It's just completely mad. It just doesn't work. Um, and there's no indication that, that there might be some more fundamental problem. Um, if we, if we turn on the fix, um, if I can do that very quickly. Um, so in fact, so quick, quick demonstration. So I'm just switching between two sets of settings. So I've got light bend Scala settings, which says Scala organization is uh, org Scala lang. This is the def default. Type level Scala settings are just sets um, uh, the Scala organization to org type level, and it's just going to turn on a couple of these uh, options. In this case, for the SI2712 fix, we want partial unification turned on. So let's, let's just swap the settings over. Uh, where are we? And reload. And compile. And we're done. Success. So, so thank you. Um, I think, I mean, I, I, I think this, is, this, is, this, this on its own is actually quite a compelling example. I mean, there are loads and loads and loads of stuff in Cats and Scala said, um, which, because that doesn't work, accumulates huge contraptions. All of the mechanics of unapply, um, all of the mechanics of unapply exist to work around this problem. Um, all of the u suffixed methods um, uh, that, that you find in, in, in Cats and Scala said exist solely to work around this problem. So if we can just get rid of it, make this stuff work, um, then we, we've got the prospect of, of, of significantly simplifying stuff. I mean, there are, there are actually some other, some other consequences of this. Um, uh, certainly, I know, you know Daniel Spiewak, uh, he has a library which makes massive use of higher kinded types. I forget exactly which one it is, but he reported some massive compile time speed ups just as a result of being able to eliminate that, that, that kind of infrastructure. Um, so I'm even running out of the extra 50 minutes I had, had relative to what I thought. So I'm just going to show you one, some work in progress, um, which is, um, which is um, some uh, work I've been doing on, on trying to speed up uh, implicit resolution. It particularly affects um, uh, shapeless. So I'll show you an example of the kind of thing I'm talking about. So here is... So this is this is this is a little a little a min miniature in miniature sort of definition of shapeless H list type, and here is a definition of um, a selector. So a selector, if I have a, an H list is like a tuple, uh, it's extensible, uh, it, it it will contain some number of elements of of, of a set of types. So a selector, uh, if you select the, uh, it will give you you specify a type, and it will give you the first. Um, the, the leftmost element of the H list, which has that type. So, um, the the implementation of this uh, is is via is via an inductive implicit resolution. If we have an empty, uh, well, if we if we have an H list which has the type we're looking for at the head, then we're kind of done, and we just give it back. Otherwise, we need to look in the tail for which we 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 summon another implicit value recursively. So the, the way this ends up looking in code is we have we have some type, we're looking for some value in it, so we'll can, and then we'll, we'll want to sort of implicitly summon a selector, which is going to do the job of picking that value out. Now, um, this works pretty well for small H lists. 
Um, however, because uh, this stuff is actually kind of useful, people actually try using this on, on large types, but where by large, I, I mean more than, you know, sort of either, either more than 20 branches in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a sealed family of case classes or more than 20 elements in a, uh, in a case class. Um, and uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you try and scale this up to, say, for example, an H list which has got, for instance, um, how many? Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick out that Boolean right at the end, 500, 500 elements in to an H list. So I'm, I'm actually not going to compile that with vanilla Scala because I, I actually would run out of time while it compiled. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little graph um, of uh, what it looks like. So, uh, so, so this is this is the this is a graph of compile time versus the number of implicits there are in that H list. The numbers these numbers are actually slightly better than the last time I did this talk because um, there was a for, compile time performance regression in two twelve zero RC one which has been fixed. So, so the numbers have actually got better for vanilla Scala. They've actually got even even better for the the, the stuff with my inductive heuristics added on. But anyway, um, for small instances. Um, say, 100, 100 elements. Um, actually, vanilla Scala is not too terrible. You know, it takes 10 seconds to compile. Um, but it, as you can see, this is obviously fairly nastily non-nuclear. I don't know about this kink here, but anyway. Uh, it's nastily non-nuclear. 500, uh, 450 seconds. I mean, that's, that's a compile time you don't really want to have as part of your... You, you certainly don't want to have that as part of your interactive uh, 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 compile in you know, Eclipse or Ensign or IntelliJ or whatever, because uh, on, on a keystroke, I mean, that's definitely something which would be unfortunate. Um, what we can do, though, and um, what I've been working on over the last, the, last, the last month or so, is we can spot these patterns of induction in the code. So let's go back to the code again very briefly. So you can, you can, you can see um, a, a kind of a... You can see patterns... In, 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 in the, uh, the implicit, um, uh, the implicit materializes for, for the selector type. And you can, you can spot, aha, this looks like an induction. Um, and you can, rather than relying on the, the fully general, kind of very naive backtracking implicit search mechanism, you can, you can just simply say, right, this is an induction. I know I need to unroll this. Uh, I know that, for example, it might need to pull in some additional implicits at each step. But basically, I can unroll this and do this all in one go. And the result of doing that, uh, is some very, very, very significant improvements in the compile time. So, I mean, at, the, at, this, at this point, basically, that's mostly, or a big chunk of that is actually the startup time of the Scala compiler. Um, but if we take it way up to here, um, this line isn't quite linear, but it's good enough, frankly. Um, so, this is, this is, so this is 13 seconds to compile the select um, for that 500 element H list. And that, that's a that represents a, a kind of a big, a big domain model, I would say, to have, have, have 500 distinct types in, in, in some, kind of, some kind of domain, some kind of row in some kind of table. I think that's kind of quite big, which I think, I think is, is, is turning something from... Um, I mean, you know, the first problems that, that, that people have uh, when they try and use shapers for this kind of stuff is, number one, they will hit the problem label SI7046, which I, I, I have not had time to show you. The next one they will hit is, is their compile times go crazy, smoke starts coming out the back of their build machines, and, and, and think everything is terrible. So I think it's ta this, this, this kind of stuff is going to take things from being um, theoretically nice and elegant, but actually impractical, to being both theoretically nice and elegant, and also, actually, it's practical, even to large instances. Um, so I can give you a super quick demo of this, probably. Uh, let's have a look. Where is that? That's on window two. Right. So if I just if I just get rid of the comments on this, I'll just flip over here. So I'm not going to do this because that will take too long. I'm going to do this and. Around 10, 13 seconds, hopefully. We're lucky. 11 seconds, whoa, it's even faster. Amazing. Thank you. Um, OK, I'm just going to conclude now, I think. Uh, where have we got to? So this is, this is our current roadmap. Um, and questions? Any questions? 
No question. Oh, yes. Do we have a mic? So the question, the, the, there were two questions. The first is, um, do I think that all of the changes that we're making in type-level Scala will get merged into, into Lightband Scala? Uh, that's the first question. The answer, I, I, I sincerely hope so. I mean, so far it's looking really good. I mean, basically, so far, almost everything has been merged, um, and nothing has been blanket declined. Um, there, so the, the, the SIP23 stuff, the literal types, um, that's, that's kind of a, the other stuff is bug fixes, so there's, there's really no, no problem with it. Um, the SIP23 stuff is a language change, so there's you know, some bureaucracy to go through with the SIP process and this kind of stuff. Um, obviously, like, you know, type level Scala can, can, can uh, do what it wants. It doesn't have to be constrained by the bureaucracy, but if we wanted to get into, into, into Lightband Scala, then, then uh, that process, someone has to do that. I, I'm, I'm not planning to do that myself, but I'm sure we can find someone who can kind of expedite that. Um, uh, so that's that part. Of the, the second question was, uh, if all this stuff ends up in, um, uh, is, is going to end up in, in, in Lightband Scala, you know, and, and, and you know, the TypeSafe name is now currently unused. Should type level rename itself to TypeSafe, I think, which is... <laughs> um, I, so I have to, I have to say, I, I have to say that when, 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 um, when uh, Lightbend announced their name change, I, 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 I did mail... I think I... Did I mail Mark Brewer? I'm not sure. I, but I, I, I definitely... I did meet him at some point and said, well, if you're, getting, if you're changing your name, you know, is, is TypeSafe.com up for sale? <laughs> and the answer is no. So... <laughs> I think, that, I think this would create too much confusion, and, and it's used in all kinds of, you know, sort of artifact-related ways in uh, sort of organization IDs and stuff like that, so it would not be practical. But you, it has a, it's a thought that's occurred to me and others. Any, any more questions? One more question. Is, yes. Is, is type level a company, or is it a So this is, this, is a very, this is a very good question. So type, type level's origin is as a, as a, it's a grassroots um, uh, community of open source projects. Um, uh, as of kind of uh, just the very end of last year, uh, we decided to start trying to organize events, and that inevitably means trying to get hold of sponsorship. Um, in the process of doing that, um, it turned out that actually it would probably be really, really beneficial to have uh, you know, a, 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 a corporate entity with a bank account attached to be able to take that kind of sponsorship. Uh, in, in, the, in, in, in the event, I ended up doing all of that through my consulting company, which is Underscore, um, but that's not ideal. So um, uh, we have created a, uh, um, a um, uh, the, the, term, the, term, the term for the kind of company, it's, it's a UK company, and uh, it's a company limited by guarantee, which is basically the kind of company, it's a sort of a, a company which is, you would typically associate with clubs and associations and that kind of stuff, uh, which has me, Lars Hoppel, and Eric Osheim as uh, the, the sort of the, the directors of the company. And um, we will be using that as a vehicle for, 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 for you know, promoting additional events and that kind of stuff. Um, so it, it does exist as a... As a, as a, as a so it's possible to work? Uh, theoretically, um, we have no... Ha it, it, it's, 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 it's like a club, basically. So I mean, think, think of it in, in, the, in those terms. It is not, it's not a commercial entity. We, there will not be a, um, a type-level license for anything. It's an open-source uh, community interest organisation. Um, and that, 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 is, that is its entire aim. Any other questions? Yes? So, uh, in this picture that you draw, uh, do you take dot info account if you find a working body when you have Well, so that, that's, that's an interesting question. I mean, I think, um, so I think what, what type level Scala will do, its role as far as Dottie is concerned, is it, it will show the things which are of interest to um, the community, or at least this, the, the type level part of the community. So the SI2712 fix is something which is really, really important to type level projects. Um, and uh, was of less interest, say, to, 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 to Martin and to the people working on Dotty. Um, however, as a sort of response to it being merged in Lightband Scala, um, they've made the corresponding change in, in Dotty. 